Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Astrology Today and Tarot. My name is Mel Rose. This is the Tarot portion in the second half of my daily astrology post, which you can find on my other channel, Astrology Today with Mel Rose. The idea behind the second post is to bring further intuitive insight to the day's energies. I will discuss the tarot card that sits on the side of the page, then I'll make a quick review of the day's astrology before playing another tarot card, which may give us something more to think about. So let's get into it. The tarot card that sits on the side of the page today is the Two of Cups, and it is there because it relates directly astrologically to the first 10 days or the first decan of the sun's transit through Cancer. So here we are in the first 10 days of, of the sun's transit through Cancer. Uh, that is always kicked off at the beginning with the, with the summer solstice. So we had the longest day of the year back on the 21st. Um, and we're less than a week in now. <laughs> uh, and Cancer is cardinal water. Cups in Tarot are water. Water relates, that, element, that elemental symbol relates to our emotions, our intuitive capacity, and also our creative flow. Um, so we see here with the Two of Cups that two people have been sort of joined together, um, unified. And whether or not it is a romance, it could just be a friendship, um, or it could be a business partnership. Uh, but either way, these two people have a good deal of um, regard for one another, okay? They, they care about how things go in this, in this partnership, okay? And it sort of represents a mingling of op opposites. You see two people clothed slightly differently, and they each have a cup, and one is reaching out to the other. And then in the middle, we have um, this caduceus is called a caduceus and it really represents the merging of two things into one. And then we have this sort of lion with the red wings that sort of speaks like communication being key. There's a sort of energetic, almost Gemini vibe to this, but it's water. It's, it's, um, cancer. It's very much, uh, based on emotional regard for one another. And you see that Roman t numeral too. So we see all these pairs here, and that really uh, is just talking about the strength and the power and the potential of two people, right? So if two heads are better than one. And also this speaks to the, the potential, uh, if you see there in the background of a house on the hill, okay, so the, the potential of a relationship like this to, uh, to bring about some... Um, some value in our lives, some, uh, some grounded capacity in our lives, uh, from which we can grow and create. And with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle my cards while I remind myself that the sun is in cancer. And when the sun is in cancer, the sun is like our outer life. It is our expressed life. It is, it is how we show up and how we respond, especially like in our work, social and civic spaces out there in the world. And Sun in Cancer is a time, um, like I said, we just had the, the culmination of the sun, the, sun, the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. So this is like, these are the hottest days of the year. Uh, it's kind of nice to know that there's a water sign, an initiating water sign in charge. And it's really there to remind us like, hey, take care of one another, okay? Bring one another some water, uh, nurture those people that you like to keep close, look out for them. Look, the weather is hot and, um, you know, our outer lives are really what we're all about at this time. So, um, you know, we still have to look in on ourselves and look in on other people and make sure like, hey, are you doing okay at home? Are you doing okay in your heart? Are you, are you feeling well enough? Uh, I put this symbol on here because I'm looking at an asteroid that is in Cancer right now uh, from June 10th to July 10th. It's called Toro. And Toro is an asteroid that represents um, sort of the bull, not in the same way as Taurus, okay? Uh, it really represents something that has like a massive bulky body, a certain weight, heaviness, and gravitas to them. And um, 
and also sort of the question of power dynamics like do I throw my weight around right <laughs> am I am I being bullied here or am I am I the bully in this situation that's what it kind of asks us so you know in, in the context of cancer that can really come across as a strongly almost overbearing nurturing vibe you know like our desire to give to care for to nurture those around us might be a little overbearing under that influence so we need to make sure you know a, a what we give others we have to give ourselves okay like make sure there's a balance to that and and then just be not to be overbearing in our in our de demonstration of caring with others okay uh in the moon side of the page now the moon we talk about our inner life this is um you know sort of how it feels to be us on the inside our 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 um our hearts and our minds in our bodies and also who we are at home and among the people that we keep close to us and the moon is a whack a waning crescent today in Gemini so uh, we are pushing out thoughts plan thoughts plans attitudes and dispositions that no longer work for us to achieve our goals going forward okay we're trying to get rid of especially right now with in Gemini ideas plans attitudes that really don't work for us anymore okay if you see that you have a, an idea a plan or an attitude that is really not working for you or policy a way of handling things on the day-to-day -day is not working for you it's time to try to release it and find some something better to do with it okay and give yourself some grace because we're you know the world is changing in all sorts of ways all the time and we're not going to get it right every time but that's okay as long as we keep trying right so on the moon side of the page we have a couple of really positive aspects today moon goes conjunct to venus we feel the love at this time that's our feelings and our and our receptive loving hearts in this amplified position together where they're really kind of overlapping um that would mean you know from our perspective that the moon would cover venus uh, but it really is uh, conjunct is there to amplify the effects of both of those planets so uh, whatever it is that you love you've been feeling it strongly anyway with this Venus trying Pluto but we're really going to be feeling it early early this morning and then at 8 26 this morning moon goes sextile to Jupiter we can be really excellent company at this time we can be really open and sharing about ourselves we can be generous with others again look out for being overly generous but with that sextile vibration that just says cooperation is is happening that just says that whoever it is that we are sharing our our time with and our company with um you know good things might come from from that so on the sun side of the page we have a couple of ongoing things venus is trying to pluto just through tomorrow this really increases our pulling power we're really in a blessed position in terms of our personal attractiveness we can draw toward us the things that that we want to get into our lives think positive and think big okay um and and just think about attracting those things to you that you'd really like to see come your way um pluto is retrograde so pluto is you know bringing about deep and total changes to certain foundational parts of ourselves on the inside sort of our psyche our gut our hearts and minds uh, are going through some changes and it feels very personal and the experience you're having is absolutely personal it's an, it's an experience no one else can have but understand that we are all going through it <laughs> right so we want to be kind to ourselves and others while we are also you know um trying to move positively into the changes that we perceive happening in our in our lives trying to be open to the to them and ready for them because you know when we um, dig in our heels or we we kick and struggle with the changes then we really just um, suffer more it's better to even the changes that we're unhappy with and I can think of some changes I'm unhappy with right now it's better to accept that that is what it is so that you can just um, turn directly to making your plan to change things right uh, Pluto shows us that everything changes in time everything okay Saturn retrograde through October 22 is just saying look if there's um if there's something that you've been relying on especially out in in terms of your community in terms of your social sphere because Saturn is in Aquarius and wants to be Aquarius wants to be the rising tide that lifts all boats 
Uh, so Saturn wants you to make sure that whatever it is that you're relying on, um, pretty much anybody can rely on it the same way, okay? If you're relying on something that other people cannot, like say a privilege <laughs> or, you know, just a certain way of being, um, a, a certain social network that sort of gives you um, advantages over other people, you know, those aren't networks that actually work for you, okay? Uh, those are, those are, you know, even if it seems to work for you now, if it doesn't work for everybody, it's not going to work for you in the long run, I assure you. So we want to be looking at that and, and paying attention to what and whom we rely on and, and whether we think that anybody could, could rely on that. And with all of that said, oh, we got the 10 of pentacles. That's very nice, strong Saturn vibe right there. I love it. I love it. So the Ten of Pentacles really speaks to me to this Saturn retrograde, okay? Um, it's really just asking us to, again, examine those structures re we personally rely on in the context of community um, to, you know, to check to see if they're firm. We want things put together well. And what always draws me my attention in this in this card, you know, Ten of Pentacles represents sort of ultimate, um, how do I say, ultimate security and stability, ultimate sort of financial success where you've got your, you know, your happy family and you've got your castle with the moat there on the mountaintop and, you know, you've, you've got your gate that is all uh, festooned with pentacles, with coins to show how, how well you have done. And, you know, the thing that draws my attention here is you've got these two pillars, which recommend, which show strength, right, and support, but you've got this archway, right, with a keystone, and we know that a keystone, you know, that archway has to be built a certain way so that uh, the keystone goes in last, but that the other stones can uh, be in place as well. And it's the keystone that holds the archway in place, right? So um, I, I'm going to say like there's there's a key piece of um, wisdom or understanding that we have here in regards to our uh, our personal stability and the stability that we seek for uh, our families and our loved ones for our heart and home, right? Um, and I'm talking about physical stability. I'm talking about good health. I'm talking about uh, well-managed finances. I'm, I'm talking about, uh, you know, a, a well-resourced, if not luxurious lifestyle. Okay. Um, I see that. I lost the thread of what I was saying. <laughs> I, 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 I see that, you know, we, we probably have a core piece of wisdom that we know that we have to stick to. Okay. And, and really, you know, if you want your family to be well, you have to keep them close and you have to look out for them. Right. And if you want to grow these resources, then you have to keep your resources well and you have to look out for them. So there is, there is a key, there is a key stone to building stability. And that is, you know, being present for it and doing the work on it and, and not ignoring it. Right. Um, being intentional uh, about it and taken together with the with the two of cups here you know I just see you see the two of cups here and then you see you know clearly like um, probably two parental figures and a child right so um, you know I see a scenario where these two people have multiplied and added another person right um, I also see, just see a scenario where like the house in the, in the distance is, is really small here. And then the house in the distance is really kind of uh, a bit of a castle with turrets and everything over here. Right. So, um, having engaged in good faith, having, having remained involved in that relationship and, and, re and given that person the honor and respect that, that, I, that we know that they are due, um, having, you know, taken that sense of unity with that person seriously and um and having you know son and cancer having even defended that uh that union um if it came under attack 
then you know staying involved in good faith and and protecting and guarding your resources as you try to build i mean this is the potential we go from two people with a small house to sort of three people with a big house right and uh I, i'm not saying that literally i'm just saying you know we, we start with these these uh seemingly meager resources but you know love is not a meager resource love is an inexhaustible flow that you can always draw on okay so these emotional resources here um it looks like two cups but it is like to infinite, <laughs> uh, never ending cups <laughs> of love. Okay. So, you know, stay in that loving space, stay in that space of warm regard for your partner and help them attend to the material stuff. Okay. Help them attend to the finances, help them attend to your own, well, your own health and their health. Um, you know, be engaged and, and involved in doing the work and, um, you know, these two soon find more stability and security because of it. I think that's a really great trajectory, you know, just remembering that it does take heart and it does take commitment. It takes an emotional level of commitment to somebody really to build something like this. We, we don't do these kinds of things alone. We do them together. Okay, I think that's all I have to say about it today, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. I do see like the the lion's head here and these red coins, like that's really similar to me that the the lion's head and the and the wings and the coins and the extra coins there, but also like there's that uh again that keystone and then those red stars look like wings to me. So, again, communication remaining involved and engaged um, and being intentional, intentional about, um, about stewarding your emotional resources and your relationships and stewarding your physical resources as well is what brings about that sense of um, physical, ultimate physical security in the world. Okay, now I mean it. I think I'm done. I think that's all I have to say about it today. I truly appreciate you all for showing up and listening to me. Uh, my name is Melrose, and I'll see you all back here tomorrow for more Astrology Today and Tarot.